And since we are allowing people to plan meals weekly and sending their orders through our platform, we are able to track the buying pattern. And with that data, suppliers are able to predict how much the consumer needs. And or in another way, if the suppliers have a lot of seasonal products like tomatoes left in their warehouse, they can just pump in recipes that make use of tomatoes that actually boost up the sales. So with this platform, it actually benefits both parties, the suppliers and the consumers. So for let them to stay in touch. So together, they minimize food wastage. So and as an incentive to our consumer, they can always get cheaper prices if they plan their meals and buy in bulk. So with that, we are in a win-win situation whereby more users will use our tools to plan and our users themselves are able to get the benefits. And, with the, and the next thing I'm going to talk about is our plan on social impact. How are we going to bring this project to another level by making use of social network? And in this case, we considered Facebook Connect. We wanted to do something like Xbox Live or Nike Plus, whereby each of us have our own social status and we can share our records on how much did us involve in holistic events like attending online campaigns, buying organic foods, using recipes that has lesser carbon footprint, and even create and share recipes that actually benefits the others. So with content sharing, we can do even more like social buying, whereby everyone gather together and buy organic foods in bulk with cheaper price. So we are quite excited about how this project will evolve and continue we help the world to be better. It is our goal to humanize technology and making our solution part of our lives where each and every one of us will be using it as a daily tool without them realizing that they are actually saving the world. You see, when we stop wasting food, we are using fewer resources. And when that happens, we together are solving the world's toughest problem. Thank you. That was a really nice presentation. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm feeling a little bit peckish just right now, <laughs> having all that food. Very nice, lovely stuff. Um, if I understand correctly, you're in the shop with the camera in your phone, and you take a picture of the barcode on, on a product yeah. to actually find out what the product is. Um, is that actual image processing performed on the phone, or is it performed on a server behind the phone somewhere else? It, per it performs on the phone. So yeah, we, there, there's a library for that. And for now, we have accuracy of 6 out of 10 barcode images being successfully scanned. OK, so the, the phone scans the barcode, reads, gets the number off it. Yeah, and we send pushed, the ID to and the... And that gets pushed up. To the, so you're doing the scanning actually on the phone itself? Yes. OK, thank you. Excellent answer. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I have one question. Okay, the problem you guys have um, identified as f that of food wastage, right? But it seems to me like the product now, I mean, the solution now proposed <coughs> seems to be pitched more as, as eating healthily. So I don't see anywhere where I can kind of input, okay, I have five eggs left in my fridge, I have 100 grams left of this type of vegetable, and so this is what I can make. Currently, it just seems to me I can choose the products, but it's pitched more as eating healthily rather than a amount of food I have left in my fridge. So to me, the solution and the product and the problem you're trying to solve is a bit mismatched currently. Can you kind of explain that? The world today is focused on being health conscious, on what we eat every single day. And what we're trying to do from this application is that we are suggesting uh, healthy food for you at the same time you are able to plan your meals. <coughs> so when you're planning your meals, you're preventing food wastage. From that, you're actually prevent, uh, using fewer resources and staying healthy at the same time. Because for us to promote these tools to people, we must first make sure this tool is useful for their daily life. Because meal, prep, meal planning and meal preparation preparations is all about us involving in meal preparations, knowing each other's lifestyle, eating preference. So from here, we actually provide a tool that actually attracts people to start using this tool. And without them realizing, they're actually saving on resources like food, reducing food wastage. So this is our goal for that. We want to provide more features that actually make it more attractive to our users. Great, thank you. Thanks. Good job. Um, looking at all these pictures, I feel hungry now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so 
Tell me where you're getting all these contents. You have all different sources. Uh, where are you pulling all these contents from? So for this demo, of course, we get it from elsewhere. But then in our plan, like for the business plan, we actually plan to build up a community whereby recipe publisher can also be part of the community. They are the ones who are who supposed to pump in their recipes whereby they can advertise their hard copy too. And or in another way, we have companies like Nestle, they can pump in recipes that make use of their products to this um, database. Or we can allow users to create their own content and share it among neighbors, among their friends, or among anyone. Well, very interesting combination, making our world safer, very nice, environmental, uh, safe, and we are going to be healthy. Yes, my question is actually about practicality of what you presented. Uh, uh, so, did you test this? Do you have any sample of people which will be ready to enter the data? Because the overhead of entering data, what we eat, what our habits are, uh, what's left in the fridge is not automatically loaded to the system because as far as I understand, this is the case. Is this not too much overhead to get the benefit? Yes, for the... For the for, what, for how we estimate how much is left in our refrigerator, that one we actually requires users to 100%. Sit and, yes? sit and enter the data. Oh, enter the data. Yeah, yeah. So for that, we, we don't have a prototype for that, but then we, we do allow people because the recipes or the database for that, all we need is about meta, meta data. How we are actually, how are we going to find our recipes? So I, actually, I, I can show you now. So when we upload our recipes, we, we can actually tag about what these recipes, how these recipes help, and how many, maybe time for preparations, and maybe it takes 20 minutes or 30 minutes to prepare. So the, with more meta tags, we can actually allow users to search with like eating habits, like when you are in an exam, something anti-depressing food, or any way they want. Am I answering your questions? Well, my question was more in relation to entering the data to actually get use of the functionality of the system. Like the fact that there's so many eggs in the fridge or it must be somehow, you must enter this to the system. Oh. Where did that information come from? Okay, so because we are, we, are planning, we are creating a family plan, so whenever you print it as a shopping list or you just send to a supplier, we will have a record on what you bought last week and what is your meal plan for last week, the, for the previous week. So let's say you bought 500 grams. So. Yes, but for the plan of meal, I may not realize that plan, right? So I have to stick to the plan like in, in pharmacy and just do what I plan to do. In normal life, people don't do that. So there is a discrepancy between what we plan and what we actually do. So the question is about the sensitivity of that data which needs to be entered. So, mm -hmm. But maybe that's too specific. So. Okay, so when, whenever you make some changes to the plan, what, yeah. we, do, what we can do is that we actually, because we, we already reserve, let's say, two eggs for these recipes. So then let's say this, today you don't want this recipe and you want to add another one. So when you remove the recipes, they actually make the two, two eggs available to others and maybe something what we call left in the refrigerator. Sure. And no, I fully understand that. Uh, so my final question, if I may, do you have competitors? There yeah. are systems Actually, uh, what available mm. which are, yes. Okay, so what we know is that nowadays what we have is the online ingredients tools embedded into the refrigerator. This is yes. what we find most common. But then the problem is that we people, we don't deal with ingredients and we deal with what we want to eat instead. And so here, without we, we, don't want, we want to simplify everything. They can just select what they want, and behind the scene, they actually record what kind of ingredients you need, and at the end, they generate the shopping list for you. So this is what makes us different. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, makes the assumption that I cook every day, <laughs> yeah. which I don't. <laughs> um, and, and many times, I, you know, I'm at a conference, I'm traveling. Um, is there, for a nutritional basis, to keep track of what I'm eating, um, are there th ways that I can enter in, I had a McDonald's cheeseburger this afternoon, or I had salmon at the uh, buffet earlier today, to be able to enter that into my entire uh, caloric input, or is this merely tracking things for cooking um, or things that I might be eating? 
for now we don't have, but then we actually have a plan for that. So let's say now, nowadays many of the schools, they actually give a card, like something like a credit card to their children so that when they go buy something food and they can just tag the card and it will be paid. So what we can do is that next time when the, tag, the card is being tagged, we can record what kind of food they bought. So mm. here they will send the data back to the home and it tells your parent what your kids had eaten. So from there, maybe you, you or maybe you found out that your kids are not actually eating any vegetables. And when he come back to home, and he will, you, you, you can prepare vegetable stuff for him. And this is all we call about interactions between your family members. So this has a tracking mechanism also not to just provide me with a preparatory uh, side, but I can also enter in what I ate. And will it keep track of that? For now, we, we don't allow users to. Uh, um, we, but that is possible for us to add in. Hmm. Okay. okay, good. Yeah, I think you just answered my second question, which was going to be, if I come home and I'm hungry, I'll boil myself an egg from the fridge. I just get the egg out of it. But there's no recipe there that I found that makes it better than just boiling it. So I won't be using your system for that. Is it possible for me to say there's one less egg in the fridge now because I've just had one for tea? You can just, we can do a minus button for you to just minus one so egg. You, or because what, what, what I say just now is that there might be a possibility that there are still five eggs left in the refrigerator. So we are not actually giving you 100% accurate data, but we suggest to you that you might want to check your refrigerator before you actually purchase it. Okay, thank you very much. Good, good answers. Good presentation. Everyone okay? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. No, Judges are happy. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so there you have Team um, HTC with Project Apple.